Hello, hello, all free crochet community. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the ACA, where I work to assure crochet is passed through the generations in better hands than we found it. Now, I'm here hosting a fantastic crochet along. You guys are finally seeing the finished product this week, and I'm so excited to be sharing the last step in this crochet along. For those of you guys who don't know, or maybe you do know, you can click on the link in this video description. It's going to tell you more about me, the American Crochet Association, and this crochet along. Now again, if you've been following along, you've been waiting for this part, um, we, this crochet along has been a mystery up until this point. We didn't know exactly what it looked like, and now we can finally see it all put together, okay? So if you guys are watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. As long as I'm here live, I'll give you an extra special shout out. And if you have any questions, comments, feedback about this crochet along in general, or about this particular part of the crochet along, go on ahead and post it. As soon as I see it, I will get to it, I promise, all right? Okay, so this is part four of the crochet along. And as you can see, I am wearing my finished poncho. I'm gonna show you a little bit more in just a minute. Now, in part one, we talked all about materials. I told you what yarn I used. And now you guys can really see why I chose a yarn that had so much color variation. Um, we crocheted granny squares together. Those granny squares were made in long strips and now you guys can finally see. Here is one strip. You can see that I have three granny squares going on one side and then it goes around to the back. So, and then, and then last week we did the panels. So off of the granny square, we start, we continued that same granny stitch pattern. And this is one panel. We made two, now we've got two panels, okay? So hopefully now you guys can finally see all these different parts, all of these different pieces that we've been working on through the weeks, and now it's finally coming together. So this particular part of the crochet along is determining how big you want your neck opening to be, okay? So uh, if you're still waiting and you maybe want some tips and tricks and things like that, hopefully this video will help. Now again, click on the link in the video description because it's gonna give you the entire pattern, details on the pattern, sizing, how to make the granny squares, how to join the granny squares, video tutorials to do that, how to work your panel, how long to make your panel, all that jazz. So this particular part is super duper simple, okay? I also have a video tutorial to show you how I join the squares this way, because not only are we joining our squares with the join as you go method, and that gives us a really seamless transition from one granny square to the next, we're also joining granny squares. We're joining this panel with that panel, and we're joining those together with a slip stitch seam. And here you can see the back side. Here's the, here's the wrong side. That's what you don't want to see, but here's the front side. It still gives us that nice, flat, even edge. Okay, so that's what we're doing this week. So here's some tips to make that something that's going to be comfortable for you. Okay, so what I suggest you do is you've got both your panels complete. You've got those ready. Do not start joining them together. What I'd like for you to do is get some kind of stitch marker. I think these are gonna work best for this because they lock into place. If you don't have stitch markers, you can you know, just use pieces of yarn and just tie them together where you would put them with a bow. You don't wanna be knotting these things into place where you can't move them. But just kind of holding the two panels together. Now, what you want to do is see where you want your neck seam to be. Um, if it's too big, if you have too much seam, maybe you want too much seam, then it's going to be really big and maybe off the shoulder. And maybe you love that look and that's exactly what you're going for. Maybe you don't want a really deep V-neck because this absolutely creates a V-neck. Maybe you want uh, a seam to where your head can just slip through, but you don't want a big opening. For me, this was very comfortable for me. I wanted kind of a mid kind of maybe that's kind of deep maybe it's kind of a deep V uh, and what I wound up doing is that this is exactly two squares in so I literally seam together two 
of the squares on front. I have one, two, three total squares on the front, three total squares on the back. So what worked for me was seaming together two total squares. Now, that's what worked for me, and it's the exact same in the back. So you can kind of see I have the same V going on in the back. You, you can try that at first, but that may or may not work perfectly for you. So again, just see, see what that feels like. Maybe you want it to be two complete granny squares plus two or plus an inch. It doesn't have to be exact granny square to exact granny square because I want it to be a nice style for you and I want it to be comfortable for you. So that's why we've held off until this point to join these two together. Because you may be looking at this finished project and go, well, wait a minute. If I did Jago with, with each side of the panels, why didn't I just, you know, when I started my second panel, why didn't I just join this square to that square and this square to that square? You can do that, but you might have gotten stuck into a style that you didn't like. Let's say that you did do that. And let's say you made the exact same size that I did. If you joined it together and then tried it on, it might have been too big or too small. So again, you don't want to join them or you don't want to feel stuck joining them one square to one square. You want to go more so with a measurement that's going to feel comfortable to you. And it's okay if parts of your granny squares are joined and parts of them aren't. That's totally fine. Whatever you do to one side, you may want to do the exact same thing on the other side. And the reason I say that is that this is a fairly symmetrical project. So if you're two squares up over here and you're three squares back over there, it's not really gonna fit, okay? Or if you're two and a half squares up over here, but two squares back over there, it's not gonna be symmetrical. It's not gonna feel and fit the same. So that's one of the main reasons we've waited to this point to join the squares together, and we're joining it together with a slip stitch seam. Um, another reason that I think is pretty important, and maybe you guys will agree with me, is that this isn't huge, but it's a pretty big project. So if we were joining this entire thing together as we worked, you know, that can be kind of hard to lug around and it's less portable. So I really like to try to make things as portable as possible. And that's why we made one strip and then panel, put that off to the side, make another strip and panel, because those pieces are smaller and they're easier to, you know, kind of take from here to there. And they're easier to work with. If you've ever worked with a really big project, like just even picking it up and turning it after each round, that can be kind of clumsy and it can be kind of um, difficult to work with. At least I feel that way. So that's just one more reason I wanted to have two separate panels. It feels easier, it feels more portable, and also you're gonna have far more control over how long that seam is as you're working it. So if you have waited until this moment to actually follow along, because you're like, I just need to see more. I. I just want to see more. I don't know if I'm choosing the right yarn or the right color. Now is the time to see quite a few finished projects um, that you can kind of scroll through. I've been talking about it a little bit uh, up to this point, and now is really the time to where you can see the yarn that I used worked up in, in different or in different colors on different body styles and different sizes and different shapes. Now's the time that you can see that. You can also see solid colors of yarn that were put together in lots of different ways. So that way you're still seeing, you're still really accentuating these individual granny squares and the panels, but then also how they look and feel together as a whole. So I've got some great examples that you guys can see. Click on the link in the video description. Um, and there are going to be links for you to view this project on Ravelry. I love using Ravelry because um, anybody can add their project and link it directly to a pattern like this one. And right now there are 32 projects posted. Some of them are entirely finished, so you can kind of scroll through those. Some of those were just still seeing what yarns were used and how those colors work up. So it's really a great lookbook to look at all of that different um, information to just kind of see what's going to work best for you. This is going to be something that you're going to wear. Hopefully you want to wear it. I want to, I love wearing mine. I've been so excited to wear it 
and I haven't been able to until now. So you want it, you want the yarn and the fabric to look comfortable, to feel comfortable. You want it to be in colors that you love that are going to integrate well into your wardrobe. So hopefully this particular piece is something that, uh, you know, after you look at a few projects and a few different yarn options, hopefully you'll be able to see something that just is going to speak to you and you're like, yep, I got to make it. I got to wear it all the time. I'm so excited. And as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback about this crochet along, post it right here, especially on these videos, because as soon as I see them, I'll get right back to them. Okay, so the last th few things that I want you guys to do, um, yes, create your Ravelry project. Yes, post them there. Yes, keep those projects up to date. I've got all the details on how to do that when you click on the link in the video description. Um, but also, in addition to that, use the hashtag here. Um, whenever you're posting on social media, especially in this group, whenever you're posting your yarn or your finished project or your, you know, anything pertaining to this crochet along, whenever you use that hashtag, you guys can see it in the video description here, um, it links all of those projects together. So all I have to do, all anyone has to do is just click on that hashtag and it's going to sort everything that we've posted using that hashtag and that way you guys can just kind of scroll through and see all of that. So it's a really, really cool tool uh, that helps us keep everything organized here. So definitely check it out. All right, guys. Um, the last thing that I want to tell you guys is if you have not already signed up for email notifications, go on ahead and do that now. You guys can click on the link in the video description. It's a big red button. It says subscribe for email updates. Uh, not only is there going to be a finishing party for this crochet along that I don't want you guys to miss, we're going to look through all the finished projects together and just have a really fun time. Not only are we going to do that for this particular poncho, but I have something really special planned for you guys. I've got another crochet along that we're going to be doing together. And that's maybe all I can say for right now. Um, I think the only other thing that I'm going to tell you right now is that this next project also uses granny squares. So maybe that's all I can tell you for right now. But if you guys want updates on that and you want to stay in the know and you would like to do another crochet along with me with granny squares, then make sure that you're signed up for those updates and you won't miss a thing. Okay. All right, everyone. I'm going to see who's here, where you guys are viewing from, all that fun stuff and answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, let's see. Let's see what's in the comments so far. All right. We've got Jennifer here watching. Hello, Jennifer. Deborah K. Rowley is here. Teresa is here watching. My friend Jerry Sue Tinker is here. Hello, Jerry Sue. Always so good to see you. Tanya Hartz is here watching. And that's it. No questions, no comments, no haze, no hellos. That's all right. You guys are busy. Both your hands are occupied crocheting your, your granny square ponchos. I know it. I know that's what you guys are doing. Anyway, hopefully this part is quick and easy, and hopefully this tip will help make this poncho fit you exactly the way you want it to fit you. Uh, I can't wait to see your finished project, so keep us posted. Use that hashtag post your projects here and definitely post your projects to Ravelry because I can't wait to see them. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here in the all free crochet community. I, again, I'm Selena with the American Crochet Association. I hope you guys are really enjoying this crochet along and I'll see you next time. Peace, love, crochet, everybody. Bye-bye.